Hey yo, Omni Dogs and Omni Kittens. Omni Dog here with a review of some books that I've read that are good. So let's get going and talk about these books that I think you would enjoy because I enjoyed them. Uh, first books I'm going to talk about are uh, books that are offshoots of the Black Hammer series. Now, first of all, I'm going to recommend Black Hammer by Jeff Lemire. Um, this, if you haven't read this yet, you got to get on this. Now, this is the Super Deluxe Giant Library Edition from um, Dark Horse. You can get this in trade paperbacks if you want to say some dosh. I don't blame you because this is big, but it's fantastic. Um this is collecting Black Hammer 1 through 13 and Black Hammer Giant Sized Annual. Um, and it's huge and it's wonderful. And this is one of the best books that's come out in the past five years. I'm telling you, Omni Dog wouldn't steer you wrong. Uh, I've, I've done a review of it in the past. It's simply fantastic. It is one of the best things that's ever been done by Jeff Lemire. And it doesn't involve hockey. Uh, or anything. So I'm assuming you all know how great Black Hammer is because there's two offshoots that are written by Jeff Lemire and they are remarkable. Remarkable. Uh, I give them both five out of five root beers, five out of five stars, five out of five pretty girls, five out of five hot guys, five out of five Spider-Men, whatever you want to choose. It gets all five out of five everythings. Um, first book. Um, now, you do have to read uh, Black Hammer to get these books. And I would suggest you read them in the order that I read them. And that is first to read Sherlock Frankenstein and then to read Dr. Star. But I guess it probably doesn't really matter. You could read them in either order. I read Sherlock Frankenstein and the Legion of Evil first. I read it this morning. And let's take a look at the art. It is uh, very nice art. That's really not the best panel to choose. Here we go. Uh, it's a little flat, but it's serviceable. And this one deals with Black Hammer's daughter, who is determined to find out what happened to Black Hammer. Uh, the premise of Black Hammer the book is that... Black Hammer and their version of the Justice League and Spiral City all disappeared um, the day they beat their version of the Anti-Monitor. And uh, they all disappeared and they're all trapped on this Earth-like city and can't escape. Um, that's the basis of Black Hammer. And she is on, in Spiral City on her Earth as a journalist trying to find out what happened to her father, Black Hammer. So she's going around and she figures out um, the world's, her, her father's uh, greatest enemy was Sherlock Frankenstein. And she wants to know um, where Sherlock Frankenstein is. And she goes about investigating his whereabouts. One lead leads to another. And another, and her exploits are very interesting, really well told. Um, she she wants to find Sherlock Frankenstein, and she runs into a cast of characters like you wouldn't believe, and uh, from uh, old villains to old heroes to uh, the equivalent of Arkham Asylum there, and to uh, Black Hammer's old lair. And she runs into Dr. Star himself, who gives her the key to the old lair. And she does, it's not a spoiler, eventually does run into Sherlock Frankenstein. But it's more her adventure in finding Sherlock Frankenstein that is so interesting. And it is a marvelous book. And it is as well constructed and well told as Black Hammer is. I can't recommend it enough. Sherlock Frankenstein and, and the Legion of Evil. Uh, wonderful book. Absolutely wonderful. If you liked Black Hammer, you'll love Sherlock Frankenstein. And the next book, Dr. Star. 
uh, is Jeff Lemire's version of Starman, and not coincidentally, he's the Doctor Star's name is James Robinson, which I found interesting, and it is full of all kinds of references to the Golden Age and the Silver Age, but it's really the story of a man who got sucked into his job, sucked into his superhero. Uh, sucked into his superhero job and lost time with his family, never got a chance to make it up, and uh, it cost him dearly. Uh, this is really not the story of a superhero, but the story of the man behind the superhero and what it cost him. It cost him his family, and it cost him his relationship with his only child, his son. It cost him his wife. And yes, he made great discoveries. Yes, he discovered alien life. And he discovered uh, amazing things um, in other worlds. But at the very end, he's left with nothing on Earth. And I'll admit, I got choked up at the end. Uh, it's a very touching, very um emotional book it is very well done very well crafted it, it's it's not a long read it's um it didn't take me long to read it all it, it is remarkably well done very touching very heartfelt very real life it feels very real he gets sucked into a black hole and comes back home and it turns out 18 years have passed he hasn't aged a bit his kid's grown up and is in Vietnam. Um, his wife is aged and is an alcoholic and 18 years is gone on earth. And, and he just like in the blink of an eye, 18 years is gone. And, you know, of course, things can never be repaired from that. And he's uh, a broken guy at that point. He continues, you know, living his life, but things can never be repaired. But at the end of the book, he finds redemption, and it's a lovely story, and it's really well done. So if you like Black Hammer, you got to get these two books, Dr. Star and the Kingdom of Lost Tomorrows, and Sherlock Frankenstein. Then I read three books. They were all volume twos that were even better than the volume ones. So I'll buzz through these really quickly so it's not too long of a video. But the first one by Tom Taylor is volume two and the final uh, the final book of X-Men Red. And in this book, we see uh, Jean uh, putting together, well, she's already got her team, but she is trying to find out who has turned the world against the X-Men, who has turned the world against her and she finally figures out who it is, and she has to figure out how she's doing it. It's Cassandra Nova. How she's doing it, how to outsmart her, and how to take her down. And it involves... Now, I'll admit, I'm, I'm not the most extensive X-Man reader. Um, I don't have the most knowledge. I think I've been an X, into the X-Men for probably the past 10 years. So I'm not, and as opposed to the past 50 years for DC. So I've really only been a Marvel reader for the past 10 years. But I will say Tom Taylor writes a book that is easily accessible for a reader like me. I understood everything, got everything. I know who the characters are, what their deal is. He's really done uh, his research, and I understood everything there is. I do... Um, have working knowledge of uh, the X-Men um, and who everybody is. So it's good. I understand what's going on. And um, I found this book to be marvelous. I loved X-Men Red, book one and two. This book comes to an end uh, to make way for the new team. And it comes to an end in a, in a glorious way. Really great writing really nice art and of course it's great because it's got x-23 and honey badger in it who are my two favorite marvel characters at the moment and um it's done really well i 
Um, highly recommend X-Men Red Volume 1 and 2. And Volume 2 is even better. Uh, I like Volume 1 a lot, but Volume 2 is even better because... Um, there's a lot of really good action, interesting, it's not just fighting, but it's interesting action sequences that all build up to a point um, that where it comes to, um, it comes to a really great ending that makes a lot of sense, uh, that makes, that really renews my faith in Jean Grey. It makes her out to be uh, one of the best X-Men, I think. And so I highly recommend X-Men Red Volume 2 and Volume 1. I think they're great. Really solid reads. Uh, the next book is also an X, uh, X-Men book. It's the follow-up to Rogue and Gambit, and that is Mr. and Mrs. X. Now, as I said, not that much X-Men knowledge in Rogue and Gambit. That's in kind of the outer boundaries of what I know of, but Kelly Thompson, who wrote Rogan Gambit and Mr. and Mrs. X, does such a good job with this, I didn't need to have that much knowledge. Mr. and Mrs. X is Rogan Gambit on their honeymoon um, in outer... No, let's see. Are they in outer space or are they on, the, on Earth? Where are they here? Well, wherever they are... They get called to outer space. Oh, they are in space. And that's the problem because their honeymoon is in space and the emergency is in space. So they don't get a break from being X-Men at all. Rogue and Gambit get married, honeymoon in space, boom, there's an emergency in space. And the emergency is a package has all of a sudden uh, become a valuable package has all of a sudden uh, become lost and is extremely rare and can't fall into the wrong hands. And um, all kinds of people want it. Um, first, let's see, who are these guys? Uh, the Shi'ar Imperial Guard, Deathbird, Technet, Starjammers, all kinds of people want it. Wait, aren't Star Jammers the good guys? Yeah, I think they are. They help out. Um, but all kinds of bad people want it, including, of course, Deadpool. One of my favorite characters. Actually, he is my favorite character. He shows up and he wants the package too because he's been paid to get the package. And Deadpool, who I didn't know but had a thing with Rogue, um, which becomes clear in this book, he uh, is there and mucks it up and yucks it up. And um, <laughs> this, this is actually a really good book. It's even better than Rogan Gambit. And I love Rogan Gambit. But uh, it turns out the package, I don't want to spoil it for anybody, but the package is more valuable than you think. It has to do with... Um, it has to do with... Um, the mating of two very important people and their offspring. That's all I'll say because I don't want to ruin it for you. But it is an excellent book. And that's from somebody that doesn't really have that deep of a background in X-Men. And I dug it. I, will, I would continue to follow this if Kelly Thompson's writing it. Kelly Thompson's a great writer. I dig her to the max. And I really, really, really like her a lot. Um, so yeah, here are the Star Jammers and they're uh, playing the good guys in this part. Uh, but there's plenty of bad guys after the uh, package. Top-notch book. Kelly Thompson, this gal can write. She can do no wrong in my book. I like this book a lot. But read it, but read Rogue and Gambit first, then read Mr. and Mrs. X. Fun, thin trade paperback, take you 45 minutes to read. Maybe less if you're a fast reader. Then the last book I'm going to tell you about is a volume two. And this volume is even better than volume one. And volume one I loved. And that is Skyward. Skyward from Image. Um, this is the book where gravity all of a sudden disappears on Earth. And people have to get used to dealing with the huh, fallout from that. 
And in this book, um, Willa decides to leave Chicago and she leaves Chicago. Okay, I'll read it from the back like I do. A fugitive in her home city of Chicago, Willa Fowler hits the road. But there are new dangers awaiting her outside the city. Giant man-eating bugs, for instance, and maybe one or two old ones, too. So not only is there no gravity outside of Chicago, but there's no gravity to keep bugs small. So you've got giant flies and giant cockroaches and giant um uh, all kinds of bugs that are, that are poisonous and can eat you and take you and fly away with you. And uh, she's taking a train, which still somehow works. And the train stops and they uh, get rescued by some people who are farmers out there. And there's a whole thing with the farmers who are uh, living with the bu living and dealing with the bugs, but they, they actually uh, have figured out a way to, uh, in a low gravity environment farm. Um, they've also got plans to try to get back at the man who is responsible for, uh, the bad guy in book one. He's also pretty much the bad guy to everybody. And these farmers want to get back at him and the city of Chicago, where they send all their livestock and everything. And this is really well written because Chicago is feeling kind of claustrophobic to me. And the writer did a good job to get out of Chicago and find out what the rest of the United States is like. And it's filled with giant bugs. And it's really amazing. I thought this book was really well written. And here they learn to tame a lightning bug for light. Um, they're carnivorous. Let's see. They are carnivorous when they only younger fireflies are carnivores. When they reach adulthood, they become herbivores. So they're sitting here feeding this uh, firefly uh, herbs. And uh, it's really well thought out, really well done. I think you'll get a big kick out of books one and two. I think that Skyward is one of the most inventive, interesting comics out there. I highly recommend Skyward, Volumes 1 and 2. So, there you have my review. I appreciate you watching, and please leave comments. I always respond to comments. Please uh, hit the like button. Please subscribe. And, as always, peace and love, peace and love. Thank you for watching.